So the first thing for this unit is to make sure that you understand the three different methods of heat transfer. Make sure that you go through the folder on convection, conduction, and radiation, and that you can give examples for all three types. Remember that convection is going to be caused by the warmer molecules rising up and the cooler molecules sinking down due to differences in density. So this is gonna happen in fluids. With conduction, two materials have to actually contact each other so that the molecules are transferring that heat energy by colliding with each other. And then radiation, this is going to be radiant energy released in the form of waves and it can travel through vacuums and space. You will want to understand basic vocabulary and the difference between heat, temperature, and specific heat. Remember heat, we use the symbol Q and can be a negative Q if it is an exothermic reaction. Heat is measured in joules, whereas temperature is measured in degrees Celsius and is an average movement of the molecules within the substance. Specific heat is calculated in joules per gram degrees Celsius, which means that you're looking at how much heat energy in the form of joules, um, in the unit of joules, is going to be needed to raise one gram of that particular material by one degree Celsius. Each material has a different specific heat, and that is because the energy transfer for that particular material is going to be different from another material. When we look at potential energy diagrams, we want to be able to read them as being exothermic or endothermic. We want to be able to read the energy of the reactants, which in this case is going to be 200. We want to be able to understand that the activation energy is how much energy we need to add to those reactants to get the reactants activated. At that point, we call it the activated complex. So this particular graph is going to require 200 kilojoules of energy in order to get activated. The energy of the activated complex is 400 joules. After the reaction occurs, the energy of the products then tells us if this reaction is an exothermic or an endothermic reaction. If the energy is lost from the reaction, then it is an exothermic reaction and energy is exiting. If energy is gained, then it is an endothermic reaction and energy goes in and our products have more energy at the end than our reactants did at the beginning. In addition to that, you should be able to calculate the enthalpy of the reaction by taking the energy of the products and subtracting the energy of the reactants. You should be able to look at the specific heat of a material and determine if the material would be a good conductor or a good insulator. Remember that specific heat is how much energy is necessary for one gram of the material to raise in temperature by one degree Celsius. So if a material has a very high specific heat, it's going to require a lot of energy to change the temperature. That also means that that material is going to cool off slowly. If a material has a very low specific heat, like lead, then that means that that material is going to require less energy to change in temperature and will change temperature much faster than something with a high specific heat. Something like lead will heat up very quickly, but it will also cool down very quickly. Next we get into some calculations. If we want to calculate the enthalpy of a reaction, we're going to take the Q and we're going to divide it by the number of moles. So for this first problem, to find the delta H of the reaction, we would take 1340 and divide it by 0 0.677 moles. For the next problem, we have a balanced reaction and we have to remember that this tells us that one mole of methane is going to produce 890 kilojoules of energy. Or if I have two moles of oxygen, that's going to release 890 kilojoules of energy. So we have to pay attention to what the problem is asking us. This one is asking to know how much energy if we have two moles of CH4 burning. Well, according to my balanced reaction, one mole of CH4 is going to release 890 kilojoules. Well, we want to know what if we have two moles of CH4. So if I multiply this by two, that's going to tell me how many moles or how much energy two moles will make.
In the case for letter C, we're given grams. Well, we have to remember the balanced reaction only tells us the relationship between how many moles makes how much energy. So my first step, if I'm given grams, is going to be to convert this to moles. So I can look on my periodic table and find out how much one mole of CH4 weighs, which is right around 16 point um, zero five grams. So I can take my 13 grams of CH4 that I have, divide it by the mass of one mole, and I will find out how many moles of CH4 I have, and then I can multiply that by the relationship that one mole of CH4 is releasing 890 kilojoules, and I can solve my problem for letter C. You should be able to recognize that when we look at a chemical reaction, if our product is energy, if our energy is on the product side, then that means energy is coming out. If the energy was over here on the reactant side, then that would mean that energy is coming in. So that makes this an exothermic reaction. Um, the balanced equation tells me that one mole of CH4 is going to release 212.8 kilocalories. Well, I need to make a lot more energy than that. I need to make um, 598,000 kilocalories of energy. Well, according to my balanced reaction, one mole of CH4 is going to produce 212.8 kilocalories. So to solve this, I can simply take 598,000 kilocalories and I can divide it by the 212.8 to find out how many moles of methane I'm going to need. On the next problem, it wants to know how many moles of oxygen are used if I need to make this much energy, and how many grams would that be? So this time, I'm looking at a different piece of information. I'm looking at the fact that it says two moles of oxygen is going to produce 212.8 kilocalories of energy. Well. I can calculate then that one mole of oxygen is going to produce half of that, 106.4 kilocalories of energy. Well, I need to produce 445.2 kilocalories. So I'm going to divide that by 106.4 because one mole is going to produce that much energy. And that's going to tell me how many moles of oxygen I'm going to um, need. And then I can convert that to grams because one mole of oxygen, according to my periodic table, weighs 32 grams. And that will help me find out how many grams of oxygen. The last problem here works the same way. Um, I'm given 38,800 um, grams of carbon dioxide. So I'm going to need to find out how many moles that is. Because remember, our balanced equation only tells us in terms of moles. So one mole of carbon dioxide produces that much energy. So I look on my periodic table, I find that carbon dioxide weighs right around 44.011 grams. So my first step is going to be to take the 38,800 grams and divide it and find out how many moles. Then I can take that, and since one mole um, produces 212 kilocalories, I'm just going to take however many moles I find out, and I'm going to multiply it by 212, and that's going to tell me how much heat I produce. Finally, you should be able to solve problems with Q equals M shot. So when you read the problem, you're going to want to pick out each of the different pieces of information so that that way you can lay out the problem and solve using the equation of Q equals M shot. So I've laid out each of my variables based on what my problem says, and then I'm going to set it up and solve for my C. So you can see my setup here so that I can isolate my C and I can solve for C by taking 1,286.75 and dividing it by whatever 25.75 times 110 is. Again, the best thing to lay out a particular problem is to pick out each of your different pieces of information so that then you can uh, lay out your problem. You want to remember that the Q of the water is going to be equal to the Q of the metal. 
And so in blue here, you can see that I have laid out in blue the Q of the metal. The mass of the metal is 80 grams. The temperature change of the metal is 70.8 degrees. And we do not know the specific heat of the metal. That's what I'm trying to solve for. In terms of the water, I know the mass of my water. I can calculate the temperature change of my water. And the specific heat of water is 4.184. Once I have all of that, I can go ahead and lay out mass times the temperature change times the specific heat of the water equal to mass of the water times the temperature change of the water times the unknown specific heat. And then I can solve for this piece. So I'm going to have to do some basic algebra. I'm going to need to divide both sides what, by whatever 70.8 um, times 80 whatever the product of that is, I'm going to divide the product of this, and that is going to allow me to solve for C for this problem, and that'll tell me the specific heat of my metal. And finally, I would suggest that you take a look over the labs that we've done, the enthalpy of a candle where we calculated the delta H by figuring out how much energy the water gained from the burning of our candle, and then dividing it by the moles of um, wax that we burned, we could then find the enthalpy of the reaction in kilojoules per mole. Also, make sure you look at specific heat data and understand the difference when we see water has a specific heat of 4.184 versus gold that only has a specific heat of 0.13. And then we want to make sure we understand the law of conservation of energy, that the energy that the water gains is going to be equal to the energy that the metal gave off um, in order for that water to go up in temperature, or if we were looking at a chemical reaction, um, the water could go up in temperature or down in temperature, depending on the energy of the reaction being exothermic or endothermic.